with that, uh, so ma'am, I know, yeah, so, so uh, we, you know, I know you like you don't don't have a presentation, but please uh, share your thoughts with us either from the dais or from uh, you know the seat itself. Yeah, please. Yeah. Is it audible? Yeah. So uh, my name is Shubhra Mohanka. I'm from a company called Gautam Solar. Uh, we have been in the business solar business since last 18 plus years now, and uh, so we have been an old war war <laughs> workhorse. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of companies coming and going in solar at a very, very fast pace. Personally, I've been in with, associated with the solar business since last 15 plus years. Uh, we are, a, uh, briefly, we are a 120 megawatt solar module manufacturing plant in Haridwar. And we have executed around 20 megawatt plus distributed solar projects. So this is our background. Um, now, um, what I would uh, want to do, um, ideally would have wanted to do if SBI was not there, but what I would really want to do right now would be to segregate rooftop into two parts, basically. So rooftop is one part where the uh, rooftop business is being driven is by government. So there's a lot of government tenders being coming out from SECI, NVVN, NTPC, CL, railways, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is constituting a huge volume of business and it's then driving the entire business. The second part is the private, which is which are which are commercial and industrial enterprises, which have no subsidy support, nothing from the government, and they are uh, putting up rooftop solar power plants. So I think uh, Ritu from Amplis focused a lot on it, and I really found her presentation a lot more admirable. I would like to focus on the government part of business, which is actually going to constitute. I would say around 80% of the business which is going to happen in the country. Um, my presentation is focused towards industry players, who are the solar industry players who are bidding in these tenders. And I would be, uh, the things that I would like to do would be to highlight the risks, the nuts and bolts of the business. Uh, technology uh, part I'll cover, but I think I'll mostly cover the, te the commercial parts of things which are affecting the business right now. Uh, so let's say, so let me talk about, um, so talking about first the government business, if I talk about the recent bids which have been put uh, in SECI, CL, railways, um, uh, there are three tenets on which those bids are being called for. The first tenet is uh, that the government guy is identifying the building for you, apparently. He's supposed to identify the buildings for you. And that is the benefit of working in government, actually, because you're supposed to get the order as soon as you bid, bid for the tender. That is the first thing. Second tenet is that they are going to charge a service charge from you, from the industry people like us, uh, the people who are bidding, and a performance bank guarantee from you, uh, because they'll be issuing you incentive based on the work that you have to do in a certain period of time. That period is defined typically 12 to 14 months, in which you have to identify the building, which supposedly has already been done by them, sign the PPA, then uh, put it up and then execute it and then you know and then you're supposed to get that incentive that is the second tenant pbg and service charges the third tenant is the incentive if you can finish it in 12 months you get a certain better incentive if you don't finish it within after 15 months you are as good as a gone company yeah. you are a blacklisted your pbg is forfeited you're not so you, you're not there basically after 15 months now the issues that we are facing right now is uh, because of the major hangama of getting the solar prices to be really, really low. Uh, the technical conditions are put extremely low. The financial conditions, I mean, the entry barriers are extremely low for any guy to enter into rooftop solar industry today, which is great if you're an entrepreneur, but which is not so good because actually this industry is not going to survive if nobody is going to factor in the costs which are going to come there. The, the first clause, which was the identification of building, none of the... In, uh, government agencies and whoever will, whoever has that initiative to go and talk to them, they'll tell you very frankly, no buildings are identified. We have not even spoken to the person who has gone there. So as soon as you get the letter of allocation and you go to that guy, he says, what? Is there supposed to be a rooftop solar power plant that is supposed to be put up here? He is not aware. And that is the best situation you are in, by the way. The first situation that you are in is, if he has already put up a rooftop solar power plant on his building, and the third worst situation is if he says that, you know, why has this company taken out a tender for me? I can take out a tender myself. I know how to take out a tender. Why do I need to go through SECI or an NVVIN, etc., etc.? But your clock as a system integrator, as a bidder, that is ticking. Your performance bank guarantee, your service charges, your incentives, all the assumptions that you took while putting the bid, all of that is ticking. 
so we need to as an industry we really need to get our act together and tell these government agencies that they are not there they are not charging service charges to take out that piece of document they are supposed to identify the buildings and give it to us what they have written in the tenders that is the first thing that we need to do and we need to raise this point collectively as an industry i would say that is the first thing second thing <clears throat> okay so second thing i should have said this so i'll give you an example which no longer exists as the risk this seki tender the 500 megawatt that came out uh, and was taken out some four four five times it specified that for the the gst clause the the bidder was supposed to carry that risk of gst so there was no clarity in the ppa nor in the tender document what is going to happen to the gst so i ask a when very eminent uh, so i am of course my background because i have 18 plus years so i am more in off grid to mujhe laga mujhe nahi samajh mein aa raha hai you know there must be rooftop players much mature than me who would understand it so i called one very good friend of mine and a very good premier than megawatt supply and stuff i said what are you doing about gst he said ma'am hum to leke nahi chal rahe hain maine kaha leke nahi chal rahe hain matlab kya hai kehte mam jab pata hi nahi hai to leke kya chalenge to maine kaha but then if it happens then he said lekin ab pata hi nahi hai to kya karenge and you they got 180 bids i mean can you imagine without that the clause where it's going to be 5% to 28% that entire risk was being carried by system integrators because it was a i don't know i mean maybe there's some more intelligent guys at work because if you had put up at 28% you are not going to win the bid any which ways which i am one of those people and if you have put it at 0% god save you so these are the kind of things which as an industry we really need to educate ourselves i have really i have been pushing my team that you know let's put our financial bidding jo hum karte hain usko online dal dete hain linked win pe dal dete hain kam se kam log cost to leke chale wo sare ke sare which people are not taking today and the pbg is getting for the service and third thing is service charge i think as an industry we really need to put our foot down so all of those who are not aware seki 500 megawatt ho nahi ho 1 megawatt lage nahi lage seki will be earning 160 crores in dd and bg charges on day 1 from you guys 160 crore ka unka net income hai the only guys who are earning in solar today are the tendering agencies so we really need to tell them that you know you know you really need, i mean i have no point i have no absolutely no qualms in them earning but at least let the guys let it be linked to payments let it be linked to subsidies that they have to give let it be linked to something you know which is more result oriented instead of you know putting it down the table just 3 months down the line and all of us need to factor in the, in, in those costs per se the how will you get those incentives if the ppas are not going to get signed i mean none of the, none of us are going to get that incentive so we really really need to educate uh the industry people the system integrators who are continuously coming in and i think the onus is on the mature guys who have been in the industry for that that point in time that you know if this business has to run the government business which is going to constitute around 80% of business i mean if you calculate the megawatts that are going to be there i think it will be larger than any other bids that have i mean in the rooftop sector i would think it will far outpace the private sector we really need to look at that because you know they gone were the times when i was really happy when you know solar biz mai ko yaad hai jab 2005 10 mein koi company shut down karti thi business used to be very proud and say are dekho usne dhang se nahi chalaya business band kar diya now i really get scared when people shut down their businesses in solar because as an industry we need to be viable to the lenders who are sitting there if we are not viable to them if we do not have viable business models as an industry we do not have a future so we really need to get, to get our act together and get this going we really need to get our act together pitch these tendering agencies pitch seki's nvvn cls of the world that you know you not got the god's birthright to earn you have to go and identify the buildings you can't be putting pbg and service charges clauses you know you, we have to really get our act together and get this across to mnre and across to all the representing agencies jahan pe hamare paas wo hai that is the first thing i want to say second thing is about private customers private customers are beyond me actually they take a long long time to decide and then they'll come out with those 10 proposals and say ki bhai rate to itna aa raha hai to kar you have to match it karke because he's everybody is taking from panel a inverter b uh, structure c a plus b plus c ka combination hai so if i am taking from you or i am taking from somebody else what's the difference and so we really need to again have this education that you know system integration is a job i mean what sanshur's uh, presentation showed it's a real job i mean you really need to get into it you really need to do it the way you combine those factors together is actually going to make the difference i'll give you an example we started our module manufacturing in 2010 back in 2008 i put up a 100 kilowatt plant us samay to karodon mein bikte the 
सो दैट गाय वॉज एक्सट्रीमली रिच आप शौकिया कर रहे थे महाराज सो ही सेट मुझे तो जर्मन सब कुछ चाहिए जर्मन पैनल जर्मन इन्वर्टर जर्मन केबल एंड गुन गॉट द वर्क सो आई सेट ठीक है सर जर्मन पैनल लगा देते हैं हमें भी सौ किलो वॉट दो हजार आठ में कौन लगाता था वी आर वेरी हैप्पी वी गॉट द बेस्ट कंपनी जर्मनी में जो थी उस टाइम पे उनको हम लोग लेकर आए उनको वो भी दे वेरी सरप्राइज कि हमारे पैनल भी इंडिया में बिक सकते हैं या कोशिश करते हैं सो वी जस्ट पुट डाटा फाइव एंड एंड दिस इज वेरी वेरी पर्टिकुलर वॉट दी वॉट मिस्टर दीपक हैड ऑल्सो सेट आज 2016 में उसके पीछे पैनल के क्रैक्स आ गए अब हम गई कंपनी के पास में तो पता लगा कंपनी तो तीन बार ही बिक चुकी है नाउ इट इज हैंड ऑफ सम चाइनीज गाय हु इज आस्किंग फॉर सम सच डॉक्यूमेंट विच आई हैव एब्सोल्युटली नो आइडिया कि वो क्या होता है आई हैव नेवर सीन सच अ डॉक्यूमेंट सो व्हेन यू आर यूजिंग दैट पैनल ए एंड वट यू हैव टू रियलाइज भाई उसका क्या सर्विस सेंटर सेटअप है वो रहेगा भी पच्चीस साल या नहीं रहेगा पांच साल पच्चीस साल तो दूर की बात है पांच साल भी रहेगा नहीं रहेगा विल इट बी गोइंग टू इन दैट बिजनेस दैट सिस्टम इंटीग्रेटर इज गोइंग टू बी इन दैट बिजनेस फॉर फाइव ईयर्स और नॉट विल ही डू दोज वॉरंटीज यू के नॉट बी जस्ट डूइंग इट ऑन द लोएस्ट कॉस्ट 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 उस पर नहीं कर सकते सो दैट एजुकेशन नीड्स टू गो आउट टू ऑल द कस्टमर्स All the system integrators, whoever is are going, and whoever is choosing the technology, are the guys whom you are taking from. Are they going to be around in the next five years? That is a big, big question that you really need to evaluate, and that is what we really need to do. So this was what about the risk was one of the things that suggestions that I had for uh, uh, Deepak sir uh, and the lenders etc. If they are here uh, per se, मुझे लग रहा है rooftop is going to be a टू बी ब्रैकेटेड एज अ कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल आइटम मतलब एक कार होम इस तरह से होने वाला है तो इट विल रियली फेसिलिटेट इफ बिकॉज एस बी एज अ बहमौत एंड इट काइंड ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इट्स इज चार्जिंग इट्स इज गिविंग इट्स ग्रेट बट यू नीड टू गो विद अक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ दैट आपको एक टोटल कैपेसिटी बहुत बड़ी करनी पड़ेगी टू गेट दैट काइंड ऑफ लेंडिंग फ्रॉम एस बी आई तो अगर कुछ इस तरीके का फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट निकाला जा सके विच कुड बी यू नो विच कुड स्टार्ट फ्रॉम लेट से अ सर्टन लोअर वैल्यू ऑल्सो और उसकी प्रोसेसिंग एक डिफरेंट तरीके से हो रखे जैसे हम होम लोन की करते हैं कार लोन की करते हैं रूफ टॉप सोलर लोनिंग टाइप कुछ एक प्रोडक्ट बन सके देन आई थिंक इट विल टेक ऑफ ऑन अ लार्ज लार्ज वे सो दीज आर माई कॉमेंट्स थैंक यू Thank you very much for the comment, Shubhra. If you had given me a little heads up, you would have taken the SBI guys out for a coffee or something when you started. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's okay. You know now but now now they know. Uh, 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 no, a couple of uh, or rather more than a couple, a few wonderful comments. Uh, but I'll start with the the, the last one. Uh, that's a little bit subtle and probably can be solved because we aren't there uh, in India quite. in that rooftop space where you separate things out into the commercial industrial rooftop which is essentially done pro as project finance light perhaps and the residential rooftop which truly is a consumer durables home loans uh, cdos credit default i mean sorry uh, mortgages kind of thing so excellent comment and and you can tell that none the rooftop residential uh, developers are not represented here Yeah, on this panel and i'm reasonably sure that the panelists will agree with me and many in the audience that two years from now one of the largest uh, you know owner operators or at least uh, the largest access to capital will be perhaps you know one of the residential rooftop guys so so yeah that the time for that has, is perhaps to come but you know uh, all your comments and points well taken um you know seki obviously is doing something but uh, less than ideal uh, i think we, we would sort of all agree uh, but yeah wonderful set of comments so I, um oh with that i guess uh, uh, ritu if you could please yeah uh, co compare i'll just go go make my presentation in fact i would uh, thank subhra to eco my voice and uh, in fact uh, regarding your uh, suggestion for a product i would just like to in advise in tell everyone we have got actually developed one product up to 1 megawatt financing we have tailor made the product so any branch can finance it within on that model and uh, we are looking for a small small projects in fact 1 uh, kilowatt 2 kilowatt also are coming to us in different branches across the country regarding residential rooftop although formally we are not in that line but uh, we have a scheme which is clubbed along with the project cost of housing loan so in your housing loan project cost you can add solar rooftop 
and you can get the financing at the housing loan rate, enjoy all the income tax benefits and everything, and repayment will be along with the housing loan for next 20, 25 years, whatever the term of housing loan is. So that product is clubbed with the housing loan product. Thank you, sir. Once again, uh, State Bank of India already ahead of the curve, and you are already in their good books, so this should be easy. <laughs> So again, you can just formally introduce yourself <laughs> before you make the presentation. Yes. So, uh, can you hear me? Okay. So I'm I'm Anuvra Joshi. I'm a director of CleanTech Solar. Uh, CleanTech Solar is a large developer, primarily in the rooftop space. As has happened to many of us, we have sort of found our way or sort of stumbled or, or in, into some of the ground-mounted open access uh, aspects of uh, solar as well by virtue of our customers demanding that product. Uh, but, you know, essentially we are, you know, along with some of the colleagues on, on this table, are one of the largest rooftop owners of rooftop solar in India. Uh, so I'll sort of share a few thoughts about, about us. And what I've tried to do is uh, make this presentation a little bit more focused on technology. Um, clearly not the technology person here. But uh, perhaps it's just, just, just as well, because I can give a layman's perspective or perhaps a custom, consumer's perspective on what technology me means. Some of the excellent points were made earlier that uh, I think we summarize it sometimes to consumers as such, that 90% of a solar project is very easy to do. Taking it from 90 to 99 is virtually impossible. And that's what the people on this panel essentially try to do. Forensic, o &M, proper designing, ensuring implementation of that design in reality. And you'll sort of see some of that uh, with respect to how we try to achieve that. Uh, so I figure I'll start with a very simple case study. I'll not... Uh, torture you with the details that are written in here. I'll sort of summarize it to say, and it's sort of been said that, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, Ritu mentioned that the savings are not very appealing, you know, to, to consumers. But all told, I mean, no matter which way you sort of, which way the cookie crumbles, I mean, you, uh, you do find that for a megawatt project, you will be able to demonstrate savings of 10 to 25 crores for the consumer. And that's not nothing. So now that solar has, uh, rooftop solar has crossed its infancy over the past two or three years, and I sort of will thank some of ourselves too for that effort. We like literally pounded the pavement and kind of like knocked the doors and kept educating these people for you know like 10 years, et cetera, till enough of their neighbors and competitors had it. And that's all we needed to do, not educate them, make sure their, their, their neighbor and their competitor has it. Now they all want to learn about solar and have been learning. So you already have the basics out of the way, and there is some degree of acceptability to what you're presenting. And what one can present is if you put a megawatt up, which is a typical size, a little bit on the larger side of a industrial player, they seek to say that they can save 10 to 25 crores over the, over the life of the project. And I'm just taking the life to be like 28, 30 years, not like 40 years. So just that's the only, only point of this slide, that there is a reason you can catch the consumer's attention. They don't always trust you, but they trust you a lot more than they did three years ago. Uh, th this immediately goes to the point of uh, execution and project management. I mean, you really have to plan each one of these steps. Every time you miss a step or deadline, you have to sort of like do root cause analysis and go over and over and fix it on that project, not the next project, that project. And you, uh, you know, the, the timeline is your friend because when you miss a timeline, you actually probably miss something else as well. You know, uh, you've made a mistake as well. So, I mean, these are some of the sort of steps laid out. Again, most people are from the solar industry here, do not need much of uh, uh, education. But there is one thing that as an EPC, as a, uh, you know, uh, as a lender or as a, you know, uh, even a developer, what we have found is if timelines are being missed, there's something much bigger behind it. And that's sort of the one simple golden principle 
uh, we would take out of this slide. So we take all the detailed 2000 point steps from a project execution uh, Excel as importantly as you know the deadline summary chart that you see at the bottom. If, you, if that's being followed, things are probably going right. If that's being missed, uh, something is going wrong. Um, again, uh, all of this costs money, by the way. Let me be, you know, we've been talking about costs. I mean, all of this, every slide here costs money, not to make it, but to do it on a project. Uh, in, ensuring and enforcing what are called best execution practices. You'll kind of hear it from everyone, best execution practices. Uh, doing best execution means going to the skylights of a roof and marking every skylight with a yellow tape. You know, we can see that perhaps our guys have been a little cheap here. They only marked one. They should have been two, but well, that's okay. You know, but you know, so you clearly mark that you're not going to work here. Uh, you use automated battery tools, reduces error, increases speed. You hoist up things, uh, modules and such in a proper way. You don't cut on team members. You use three team members to, to do it as opposed to one or two. Uh, you know, earthing, you try to use uh, proper clips versus cables. You create the right lightning loops. You make your plants IEC code compliant, even though that's not required presently in India. Uh, you, you essentially, there are many other list of codes and you know, my colleagues uh, who are here can sort of share that with you. Each one of them you follow each one of them is cost, each one of them is time, but from the perspective of people who literally mean to own their plants, not just sort of, you know, grow, grow our volume or something, uh, if you wish to own it for 10, 20, 25 years, in the end it has, a, it has some impact on the Excel IRR, but I think net net by spending a rupee or two per watt more, we come out a whole lot ahead. Or even if you don't, I don't think that we'd have it any other way because our consumers, the kind of customers all of some of us are trying to hit, you couldn't have a failed situation with them. So, so all told, we just do these anyways, but we really believe that this is where the right answer lies. Otherwise, you're just, people are just going to keep folding up. Plants will keep going bad in five to seven years. Um, so what's the result? Uh, I mean, if I have to summarize, I'm obviously a, like a business person, not a, a you know, technical person. So from our, my perspective or a consumer's perspective, the best way to, uh, you know, to summarize has to be very simple. What's the net result of doing all of this? You literally have, uh, what you see on the top row are two plants. One is in India, the other is in Cambodia. First is the Apollo 1.8 megawatt plant in Chennai. The second is Cambodia Coca-Cola 2.6 megawatts. What you see below are actual pictures. The, f the top pictures are the design. The bottom pictures are the as executed projects. And trust me, we did not redraw the design after finishing the execution. These are the actual design followed by, <laughs> followed by, <laughs> followed by the execution. I mean, you know, uh, even though we have set our processes up so well, even we, I must say, were impressed at some level with ourselves and with some of the phenomenal technical people that we have uh, sort of, you know, uh, su here supporting us uh, in, at Clean Tech Solar. So yeah, this is one of the slides we are very proud of. Uh, you know, my pleasure to share this with you. Uh, and, and the next step is, so you've done your perfect execution. Uh, you, I mean, you know, your job isn't to run away from there. I mean, thereafter, I mean, really, that's the start of, uh, I mean, you just kind of gotten married. That's all you've done so far. Now you have to live out the marriage for the next 25 years, 20 years, or whatever the case may be. So cus customer or consumer centricity is perhaps the sort of uh, centerpiece of, the, of that. Uh, that is led by our O&M team, or like team which is used to handling up to 200, 250 projects at a time. So handling our 60 or so projects is perhaps not that difficult for them. And we do a very good job of it. That's when you make the consumer happy. And this is, look, obviously I'm going to present something in a way that clear, pro clean tech solar, but I'm generally presenting this as good practices. This is what you want to present. This, something like this is what you want to be able to present to the client, make them comfortable, happy. They should be able to see this dashboard on their phones, on their uh, sort of laptops or computers, what have you. Generally, as industry standard, each one of them is going to cost money. Each one of them is probably going to make the lender a little happy and is going to keep your price probably 20 to 25 pesa up. I mean, versus 
the best case, like, you know, cut corners and do something crazy kind of a thing. So it's not, I mean, I don't know that that much of a difference if you ask me, at least for the good, good customers, they don't seem to care. Uh, same concept, you can, you know, then you go a step out of the way, particularly because uh, I think I should have mentioned it right at the beginning. One thing that is particularly unique about us, we are a Pan-Asia company, uh, not sort of stretching ourselves to be Pan-Asia, we are necessarily our Pan-Asia headquarters in Singapore. We are in five countries. We believe it's a very good balance between, when, you know, sort of the, uh, the, the INR returns here or sometimes when the market goes out of hand, uh, you sort of always have the hedge in the form of, uh, you know, the rest of Asia markets. The countries are Singapore, Cambodia, uh, Philippines, uh, Th Thailand, Vietnam. Uh, you are, uh, you know, so you, th this is a dashboard which we try to give those consumers which have uh, plants all across India, plants in different parts of the region, etc. This is just showing their various plants. You can click on any one of them. You go back to the, uh, go back to the dashboard that you have for that plant. You know? So that just uh, gives you a sense of how to get the customer ro sort of into so solar and rooftop solar. I guess, uh, you know, uh, the quick slide on who the consumers are. So in other words, who's bought this story that I'm telling you guys? I mean, these are the people who sort of bought that story. Some of them have bought this a couple of times, uh, all very good names. And this is the kind of names with which you don't want to make mistakes because you will pay for it dearly. I mean, uh, you won't have a viable business and eventually, uh, you know, none of these guys will come back to you. Uh, sorry. Um, just very quickly, yeah, so we are present all over India, essentially, and at least in all the states where where solar is. Very broadly, we are about 60, or, or the lower 60 projects is what we have, uh, 30, 35 megawatts in India, and about 15 or so uh, not in India, in the countries, it's in the countries that I had mentioned, mentioned to you. Uh, probably about 100 megawatts under development, some of it in ground mount and open access, uh, though we, intend never to lose our DNA of, uh, of uh, you know, being a rooftop player. So that said, a uh, couple of case studies. Uh, this is the 1.8 megawatt uh, Chennai project. And here is a project, the reason we've put it up and I'll leave it on this slide is that uh, this is a project that had everything. It had basically uh, plastic tin, I mean the metal roof. It had an RCC, what we call RCC roof or cement roof. It has a carport. Uh, one of our more interesting projects, and I guess the pictures look pretty too. So with that, uh, thank you. Thank you, Anubrat, and uh, a very well laid out presentation. And again, uh, a very different perspective to how you'd approached it. So at the beginning of the session, I was very scared that, you know, okay, seven of us are going to talk about it. It's going to be repeat after repeat. But somehow we've all, most of us have taken it from a different angle. Right. Thanks so much. No, thank you. I mean, thank you for the comments. And I hope that, yeah, the audience, I mean, I definitely felt it and not just uh, from my biased view as the moderator. I mean, I hope the, the, the uh, you know, the customers, that is you guys also felt that we all, despite all being pretty much rooftop players, did approach it all from a slightly different angle. Uh, I definitely learned quite quite a few different things today. Uh, uh, with that, I think uh, maybe because we haven't had the chance, uh, we have about 15 minutes. We're going to take five to let's uh, see, or you know, if if needed, to see if any of the panelists want to comment uh, on the other panelists' uh, slides or presentations or comments, and I will refrain from doing that because I got my shot earlier. So, uh, if I may, and uh, again, very similar to what you were talking about when Anuvrat was talking about setting up uh, plants which are owned by the developers. So this is, I'm again talking of the SPAS or the OPEX model only, putting up quality has a cost. Yes, the number one item is the solar module and all of us can use the same thing. Then come uh, inverters and depending on how you mount the plant structures and as you're laying them flat or you're putting them at a tilt and then comes the rest. But putting up quality systems, quality in, I'm not just talking of quality of the products, 
I'm talking of quality on the service side as well. Right from analysis to design to the monitoring processes, setting up your, uh, uh, you know, the remote monitoring. Uh, so in my company, we do, for example, uh, not just inverter level monitoring, we do string level monitoring as well. And then making sense out of it, you know, there is just, there is a five megawatt plant and I'm just getting string level monitoring data and doing what? So if I'm doing string level, and I'm putting in that string level monitoring unit, I might as well analyze the data. All of that has a cost. Uh, unfortunately, I, I find that 25, and it costs us that much more. We don't find a very few clients who are willing to pay the 25 pesa premium. Because even at the top rung of developers, and I'm talking purely from a success point of view, there isn't that uniformity. And so the client says X, Y, Z, A, B, C, let's not take names, is as big as you, bigger than you, we're equally comfortable, all of this is good to have, but I will not sacrifice that. It's not even, not even two pesa, forget 25. So, because you just said that there are clients who are willing to take that, so I want to know where these clients are, or if any of you has a perspective on it. I won't tell you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, that's a, that's a wonderful, like wonderful question. It's uh, look, I mean, I'll share it with everybody in the team, uh, in the in the in the room. It's been said in the morning, right? It is hard to. It's easy to talk about ca uh, sit on panels and talk about quality. It's very hard to do. You're twenty five pesa off from your nearest very good competitor, and your and just not even covered all the extra cost, and your IRR is not looking good. Uh, these are sort of the challenges, but that's fine. I mean, at least you have the comfort of knowing that I am at least here the long-term owner. So maybe the Excel IRR doesn't look so good, but my actual IRR might look better. You only hope all these things that you're doing result in something. There's no guarantee. I mean, you know. So, so yeah, all that said, we just try to make this a part of our DNA. Uh, customers eventually start buying it. Uh, maybe it's not 25, but a smaller number of customers do seem to ignore broadly. They'll get you within the ballpark and say, uh, okay, now fine. So uh, rooftop space, um, I did want to make this comment about rooftop, so, so breaking my promise, I guess. But one comment about rooftop space, which is unlike the utility scale solar guys, and I've shared this thought with some of you, where you get two opportunities to sort of go at a opportunity uh, a year, and if you miss it, if you're over-conservative or get something wrong, you don't eat for six months. We are not in that situation. That's why the price seems to be a little bit more controlled in rooftop, at least on the industrial side, because your worst case scenario kind of is that you are either too conservative and you let a two megawatt opportunity go. But that doesn't shut down your business. You, you live to fight another day. You make that kind of a mistake, a wrong module price or something on the utility scale, next bid is six months later or four months later and you have to carry your team for six months. So they are admittedly uh, facing a larger challenge in, in that sense we are. Our challenge is scaling, obviously. I mean, I mean no, nobody will fund a $50 million company. We have to scale up to, so that's, that's our challenge. But their challenge in this respect, in price competitiveness, we can afford a little bit better to be disciplined. And you know, I guess it will help us that we have SBI on our side you know, who sort of stepped into the into the breach to at least help out with, uh, we would not have expected to have eight to 9% debt financing, let's put it that way. If anybody had asked us a year ago, that was not an expectation. That is truly a bit of a game changer that has happened. But, you know, we'll try our best to keep our quality at our good levels and see what happens. Sorry, any other panelists would like to make a brief comment? <laughs> 